So in three, two. Good evening. I now call to order the Equity Committee meeting with the Equity Advisory Council for Thursday, November 3rd, 2022. In accordance with board Poli policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, committee and council members will state their names before speaking. Ms. Fass, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Mrs. Scott? Present. Dr. Hager? Ms. Jose? Present. Ms. Stolusky? Present. Ms. Hassan? Present. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Fass, please call the names of those staff members on the Equity Committee attending today's meeting. Dr. Yarborough? Dr. Handy? Present. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Ms. Fast. If you could please call the roll of the Equity Advisory Council members participating in today's meeting. Abir Shanawi. Elena Mackel. Alejandra Ivanovic. Bianca Crockett. Present. Clifford Collins. Denim Fisher. Donna Sibley. Present. Elisa Alonso. Aaron Sullivan. Present. Frank Dunlap. Javine Hardin. Juliana Valencia Banks. Present. Heather, oh, thank you. Heather Denmeyer. Present. Jackie Brewster. Present. Jane Lee. Kevin Jennings. Present. Lene Williams. LaShawn Stitt. Present. Lauren Tillman. Present. Lena Polite. Leslie Weber. Lisa Norton. Present. Maggie Cummins. Manny Henson. Maria Lowry. Marlena Purcell Colton. Present Marlena Colton Purcell. Thank you. Megan Stewart Sicking. Michelle Stansberry. Monica Sample. Present. Sam Tillman. Shane Pres Jen oh, Present. Thank Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Tillman. Shane Jensen. Sherelle Jones. Solomon Davis. Susina Tillahoon. Tiffany Stith. Present. Zamira Simpkins. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fass. And are there any names of staff members or anyone else participating in this meeting um, whose name was not called? Are there any board members who are joining us whose names were not called? Okay, 
Thank you. Um, so the first item of new business is a pre presentation on Equity Advisory Council Planning Group updates. And for that, I call on Ms. Stiff. Good evening, everyone. This is Tiffany Stiff. Um, thank you for attending this evening. I am super excited that we have a lot of our planning committee members that are um, here this evening. Um, so I will go ahead and get started with the presentation. OK, so the first couple of slides that um, you will see in tonight's presentation, you will see they're kind of a review or a refresher of some of the things that we spoke about in the last board meeting update and presentation. So this is a group um, of various stakeholders. We represent parents, uh, teachers, um, from the advisories, as well as even some special members of, of TABCO, um, as well as we have um, members that are from our schools. We have parents, I'm sorry, we have principals and teachers who are represented as well. And so we're coming into this with the perspective that diversity is an asset and it's not a tool to identify and predict student success or bar student achievement. And so as this group has worked together, next slide, you'll see that we have identified um, our top five priorities. Um, again, this is the same. This is not anything different from the last time, but I'll review those five quickly. So the first one is academic achievement of marginalized students. The second is intersectionality and intersecting identities, having a framework of identities and understanding that different identities may have different needs. The third is a holding space for discussions, being able to call into others or partner and advocate. The fourth is recruitment and retention of teachers and academic assistants, considering HBCUs and PWIs with support programs for teachers of color. And the fifth item is behavior and consequences, disparities and consequences for black boys or males and the impact of exclusionary discipline on academic achievement. So these were identified as the current top five priorities and the group that worked together to discuss, well, how do we go about getting some action or some traction kind of behind um, these issues that we have with equity? Next slide, please. And so what you'll see is equity action groups. Again, this is also a um, slide that we had shown in the last presentation. We do have a small change at the bottom, so I'll go through the entire slide. Um, it's what we are calling EAGs, our equity action groups, and we would have the principal as the lead. And in addition to the principal, we would also have a teacher or staff member from the school as well as a school parent from that school. We would also partner with another school to have either someone in administration or someone appointed, a staff member appointed by administration and a parent from that school or community. We started talking more about that and the idea of this could also be someone from the community. But the idea is that we have trusted people who are a resource for families and students to turn to. Excuse me. Oh, goodness, excuse me. Um, this group would be an interracial group that ties into one of the priorities we talked about with um, the third one. And we would work in collaboration with any existing groups or teams that are already supporting students. The last item is a change. Previously, we had discussed having an executive director as overseeing um, this group. And instead, we have now changed that to it being an equity specialist. So this is someone who would directly be out of um, Dr. Handy's office, the Department of Equity and Cultural Proficiency. So he already has equity specialists that are in charge of the schools in the, the different areas. And so the equity specialist would be the person that would work as well with this equity action group and, and oversee these groups. Next slide. So same information pretty much on the right, but just again talking a little bit more about um, how we would like to see this work as well as even talk about potential budgeting that would be needed for um, this structure. So there is currently an equity liaison that's an established position that is within the schools. Each school is tasked, if you want to say, to have an equity liaison and typically 
um, the way it works right now is that this person is identified by the principal. And so um, as an additional resource, we would have this liaison would be someone who would look at identifying the parents as well that would work with the EAG. So they would identify um, a group of parents, not necessarily make the final selection, but again, just being familiar with the school and the community, they could bring um, up parents' names as people who would be good matches and um, really passionate about this particular topic and helping to um, move this forward. So um, the equity liaison is a position right now, even though the principals do determine this person, it is not a um, position where there's any money associated with it, such as the EDA. Um, and so what would we what we would what we would be looking at is actually for a budget item um, that we would request for the upcoming budget um, would be to have this person, this equity liaison, have an EDA. And so the EDA um, means the extra duty assignment. And so what that is, is that allows a um, staff member who is in charge of this to actually get funding for being in this position. This is something that, for example, with yearbook may happen or um, the magnet program, even for coaches actually. So this is not something new um, as far as that concept, but we are asking now for to have um, money for this person for the equity liaison because they do not receive EDA right now. So as we look across the system, there are, um, we have 27 high schools, we have 28 middle schools, and so that would be a total of 55 secondary. And we would look at having the equity liaisons be a tier three, which means they are 170 plus or more hours. And so for that category, the amount is $3,316. And so across secondary schools for the 55 schools, middle schools and high schools total, that would be $182,380. Then we have another 116 elementary schools, and for that, it would be a tier two. And so um, that pay is lower and it does not exceed 170 hours. It goes up to 169, and I believe the minimum is about 140. So for um, the budget for that, that's a rate of $2,212 for a level two. So for the 116 elementary schools at that rate, that's $256,592. So across the school system to accommodate this for our elementary, our middle, and our high school, we will be looking at submitting a budget request for $438,972 to provide the equity liaisons with an EDA um, in this across all of the schools. And I think that's everything for that slide. All right, next slide, please. Again, we talked about tools um, and what are tools that staff members, administrators, et cetera, have available to them um, when it comes to equity. Um, there's different policies that we can refer to. We actually have within DCPS, it's policy 0100 that specifically refers to equity. This is part of, excuse me, BCPS's commitment. We also have at the state level MSDE equity and excellence specific to BCPS as well as our strategic plan or the compass. And then some of the newer things are the use of a purpose statement, um, developing this brochure um, that can highlight some of the best practices and equity and use of these equity action groups, which is what we just talked about, um, the structure and how we'd like those to, to work in the previous slide. Um, Next slide. There it is. OK, so additionally, um, for policy 8315, it outlines who, how um, the public is to participate in uh, board meetings as, as well as who can participate. So within the, the policy, it talks about um, there are certain stakeholder groups that are able to have set slots um, so that they can speak to the board at board meetings. And so what you see is that there are um, different stakeholder groups that have been identified 
it's not showing as well on my screen because I have it blocked, but hopefully you can see it on your screen. There is a letter F that's specifically where mine is blocked. So again, hopefully um, when you guys are seeing it, you can see slide F. I'm sorry, um, point F and it's not blocked on your slide, but F is the advisory groups. And so this policy was last updated in 2019. And so um, I'm trying to pull up my slide because I, I can't see it on the screen. There it is, okay. So F says specifically other advisory committees and associations that are identified by the board and existing as of the 2018-2019 school year. So this advisory was not um, in existence as of the 2018-2019 school year. Um, there potentially may be other advisory groups as well. Um, so if you go to the next slide, please. Um, you'll see down at the bottom again, it's blocked on my screen for some reason, but there is another revision of them that shows again that this was last revised in 2019. So we are asking or looking into is possible to have this policy updated so that any of the advisory groups that have come into existence, which would include include this group um, since 2019, could now be included so that as a stakeholder group, we would have an opportunity to report any results of meetings and group activities at the board meetings as well. Um, so I think that is it for updates and kind of where we're moving and progressing towards. And last slide, I think, is just uh, questions. So thank you for your time and attention. And again, thank you so much to our members who have been, we've been having these meetings and great discussions and basically taking that input and feedback. And that's part of what we are um, presenting to you guys tonight with where we are. So thank you to those group members and for any other members that are part of the meeting this evening. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those questions. Great, thank you, Ms. Stith, so much for that. Um, that was a, a very well done, a good presentation. Um, I found it to be very informative and the work that you all did in putting it together um, should be commended. I, I think it, it um, was very good. Uh, I just wanna say for everyone, if you have questions, um, if you could drop your name in the chat and then that way I can call on you so I can make sure um, that we get everyone. So um, I can go ahead and start off um, with a question. M mine was, you said policy 8315, you all were recommending that that policy be updated, um, but I couldn't see where there was like a yellow bar. Were you, um, making a suggestion or, or were you just highlighting where, where it was last updated in 2019? Yes, so with that, um, I was just highlighting. So for the first okay. one on that first slide, F is the advisory. So I'm guessing again, that's, uh, that's where we would fall as an advisory group, but we would not be included in that because it said as of 2018, 2019. Got it, so it, okay. Any other advisory groups after that, would not have that opportunity to speak. So um, it affects us, but again, it may also affect other advisory groups as well. So if that could be updated to include, you know, advisory groups as of the current school year, then that allows, you know, the, the newer advisory groups an opportunity to speak as well. Okay, now I see what you were saying. All right. Um, and then my other question was, um, your um, suggestion for the budget, which um, you said an equity liaison uh, EDA, and I didn't catch what that acronym stands for. Um, sure, you, so EDA mm -hmm. is extra duty assignment. I think I'm saying that correctly, extra duty assignment. Um, okay. And so what that is, is just where um, for the staff members who do additional work in the school. And that's what I was saying, for example, if you have a magnet person at the school or even coaches fall into this, or if you have someone um, like yearbook 
um, you know, these different clubs, robotics, et cetera, those staff members who work with um, um, the students are able to get an EDA. Those are some established um, positions that we have. And so the EDAs are also, it's, it's broken out into a level one, a level two, or a level three, a tier tier one, tier two, and tier, tier three. And so based on the also based on also which level or tier you are under, that corresponds to the amount of money that's received as well for that. And so we were asking for the middle schools and the high schools to be considered tier three, and then for the um, elementary school to be a tier two. And um, as far as roles and responsibilities, I didn't mention that. So as far as roles yeah. and responsibilities, um, Dr. Handy, his office um, would be responsible for writing out um, those duties for roles and responsibilities. Now that would be um, what would be kind of required from his office. But for example, again, because we already have these positions or these these people, um, the equity liaison, some of the, the principals right now, for example, how are they, um, how they are used right now is just kind of up to the principal. And so it's not to take away from that and they could still have those equity liaison um, staff members doing that, but just kind of if there's also, if you want to say some standardization, um, that's what Dr. Handy and his staff members would create in his office as well. Okay, that was my, my next question. Like what their, what would their duties be or what? Would, so his office would create that. So that was what I had. What would they do? And then um, was there any sort of specific, because as I'm sure you've heard, you know, the um, equity evaluation um, audit recently came out to say where we are. And I was just seeing if, if any of these um, positions or if you thought about it um, would be specific to interrupt or intercede any of those um, kinds of issues. Um, but it sounds like what you're saying is that's something that Mr. Handy's office would would address. Yes, as far as specific roles and um, responsibilities of that person. Okay. I don't know, if, uh, Mr. Handy, if you want to add to that. Now I do see in the, uh, you have a comment. I don't know if that's for something separate or to add to okay. what's being said now. Mr. Handy, is your um, comment towards what's being said right now? Pardon me. Yes, Ms. Scott. Um, so okay. just wanted to add a few uh, additional points to what uh, Ms. Stith has shared. So right, EDA stands for Extra Duty Activity. So she, uh, Ms. Stith gave some examples of activities that could qualify. Um, and also what I wanted to point out just, right, so what typically happens is staff would arrange, uh, you know, the duties and then the hours that go along with those duties. There's different tiers and all this is available um, in a public document on the BCPS website. And then there's a negotiation with uh, TABCO and really the, the um, you know, BCPS staff to determine, um, you know, which of the extra duty assignments actually uh, will, you know, be added to the list. So there's a, you know, quite a list of activities that already exist uh, for elementary, middle and high. Um, so there's some other components, you know, around negotiating these different EDAs. And then of course, you know, if there's, um, as always, we want to make sure there's adequate budget to support the request. Um, so just wanted to add that. And I don't I think I covered okay. the topic. Yep. All so right, thank comment. you. Thank you. Ms. Scott, I see a question that's also related to the tiers. So yeah. if we're just trying to be efficient. I don't want to, I, I see there's other people who have questions, but just to keep it kind of efficient since we're on that topic. So I was just going to ask if her question was already answered. If not, if you could answer, um, I can read it for everyone. It says uh, from Ms. Norton, um, how are the tiers decided and what is the differentiation of workload for elementary and secondary? So again, as Mr. Handy referred to, there's um, it's the document. There's a TABCO extra duty activity document. Um, it's effective for January 1st, 2022. And so within that document, there are the different student activities. Um, again, like I said, some of them could be yearbook. We could be talking about art club drama. This does even apply to sports. So um, whether it's football, track, basketball, etc. So those tiers or rates are already determined as a level slash tier one, level slash tier two, level slash tier three rate. And so the difference between the rates is the hours. So for a level one, 
um, it would be 70 to 139 hours. For a level two, it would be 140 to 169 hours. For a level or tier three, it would be more than 170 hours. So um, and reviewing that list for elementary, typically you're either going to be a level one or a level two. And for secondary is when you would have either a level two or a level three. And again, it comes back to um, it. It looks like the hours. So I hope that answers the, the question. OK. All right, thank you. We'll go with um, some of the other questions we have in here and I'll go back in order. I think it was Miss Delusky. Looks like I had her first. Thank you. Um, wonderful presentation and thank you for sharing um, everything that you did. Um, I was just wondering, um, do schools currently have the, um, I guess it's the equity specialist and or the equity liaison? It looks like the equity liaison is the parent, but do schools currently have the equity specialist? I don't know if it's being piloted in a few schools to start or is it already um, widespread? Thank you. So um, Mr. Handy can answer this more fully, but the equity specialists are already located within his office. So we do have a Department of Equity and Cultural Proficiency for which um, Mr. Handy is in charge of, and then he has equity specialists that work within that department. So those are the equity specialists that we're referring to. And so that's existing as well as the equity liaisons. He works also with the um, principals to get um, training for these equity liaisons that we are to have in the schools. OK, so is so I think I got it a little bit confused, but thank you for clarifying. So are there schools that already have an equity liaison? I don't know if it's still just being piloted or. Kind of what is the the status of getting that? up and running. So I think I'll I'll say it and then Mr. Handy may have to to okay. to supplement. It's my understanding that every school is supposed to have one. However, okay. that person as a staff member is appointed by the principal. So whether or not it's actually happening, I don't believe it is necessarily happening across the board for all of our schools. And I'll let Mr. Handy, I guess he can speak more to that. Yes, thank you, thank you Mr. Handy. Right. OK, thank you, um, Ms. Smith and Ms. Scott. Thank you, Mr. Lewski, for the question. So right, so just to reiterate, uh, my, my staff is it's me, my administrative assistant and four specialists. Uh, the specialists are actually uh, there's one specialist assigned to each of the three zones and then the four specialists, fourth specialist is assigned to central office support. So that's how my office is organized. And so to uh, miss this point, if, if each of our schools has one of my specialists assigned to support them, and then correct. Um, we started really uh, last year to really intensify our efforts to make sure every school has identified uh, an equity liaison. And I'm just thinking about who's part of our council. Um, principals can speak directly. The principals on our um, council can talk about how they went about selecting their liaison. And I know some of our non-administrative representatives are actually the liaisons for their school. So just want to defer to them if. Uh, Mr. Lewski, if you have any more questions about maybe what they do or how they were chosen, but um, yes, just wanted to add on to what uh, Ms. Death has shared. Okay, thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. Yep. Okay, and it looks like we have a question from Mr. Tillman. Yes, hi. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm the liaison uh, at uh, Hereford High School, and I'd like to be in touch with the equity specialist uh, for our area. I, I'm not sure who that person is. Um, I guess that's my question is how do I get in touch with them? Um, and then I guess I'm curious what the relationship between the specialist and the liaison uh, looks like ideally. Is that somebody that is, you know, being invited to, you know, equity committee meetings or is it, uh, I guess that's, I'm curious what that relationship should look like and, and ultimately how I would contact that person. Thank you. Mr. Handy, would you be able to uh, sure. um, answer yeah. that for him? Sure, Mr. Tillman, thank you for your question. So your specialist is uh, Jennifer Audlin. Uh, she's Great. a central zone specialist. 
Um, timing is good on your question. We actually have our first check in, our first meeting for liaisons. It's actually next week. And I do want to apologize. Uh, we're a little behind in getting the invitation out. So you and other liaisons will receive an invitation to a Teams meeting uh, to get you a chance to check in. We had one meeting last year. Um, you know, just like a lot of the system operations coming off a of winter break, COVID made some things challenging. But for this year, um, you can expect to have monthly check ins. Um, that will be facilitated by the specialist. Um, at this point, though, I don't know if you had a chance to attend like the Maryland Cultural Proficiency Conference. I did, uh, but yes. That was our first. OK, great. And I thought I saw you there. Um, so that was really our first effort to reach out um, and support registration for each of our liaisons. So that was kind of our first offering, if you will, to cover really September, October. And then now that we're in November, you'll start to get the invitations for the monthly meetings. Um, and I think we're looking at 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. virtually. So you, you'll get that invite. Okay, very, very soon. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. It looks like we have a question from Ms. Crockett. Hi, it was more of um, a comment. I am an equity um, liaison at, at an elementary school, Battle Grove Elementary School. Um, and we have met, we met last year as a area with um, Keith, Mr. Lewis. Um, and this EDA topic did come about. Um, one of the things that we were looking forward to as equity liaisons, the county, like the principals have different responsibilities for liaisons. So at my school, I am um, in charge of the equity PDs that happen, which involve a lot of prepping, a lot of planning, providing a lot of resources for staff members. And these are all uncompensated um, actions and time that goes into having these PDs. Um, so the EDA would not only have a expectation for all equity liaisons, but it would also um, allow the equity office to create a criteria of like what we should be doing and what our role should look like within the schools. And that money would also allow for teachers within the same feeder pattern to um, get together and sort of have cre um, have conversations and also have that extra time and money to support us going to each other's schools to present those same PDs so that by the time all of our students feed into that one high school, all of the teachers have had that same message and have had the same um, PD. So um, that's something that came up before. Um, and I think as equity liaison, as an equity liaison who does extra work, um, pay would be um, a little, you know, appreciated. Great, thank you for that. Um, are there any other questions from anyone who's maybe on the phone and can't put their name in chat? If there is, just kind of yell your name out. Hi, um, Chairman Scott, this is Dr. Stitt, how are you? Hello, good evening. <laughs> I just have a, um, mm -hmm. a question, a thinking forward question with uh, and I, this is great work that has been done here. Uh, I applaud Mr. Handy and Ms. Stiff for all that they've done and all the council members. But my question kind of goes to the newly elected board. So with all this work that has been put into this, uh, the planning and so forth and so on, how confident um, do does anyone feel that this will be followed through? with the new board that takes place? Oh, or, or was that too much? Or was it too much? Oh, no, sorry, I was on mute. Um, not sure. I mean, the equity committee is here. We're doing the work and um, this will be presented um, to go forward. So I, like anyone else, we don't know what <laughs> is going to happen. But um, I think that, you know, us laying the groundwork and, and doing these kinds of things um, will help to make sure that it, it goes forward. So, I mean, that's my best answer. I didn't know if anyone else had any any comment. No, thanks, okay. Ms. Scott. Thank you. Certainly. OK, is there anybody else online who has any questions who um, is not able to put it in the chat, but would like to speak or ask a question. Okay, um, I just had one more question. I wanted to 
double check and see how we were going to present it. Oh, did someone was someone's hand raised that I missed? Miss Scott, this is Marlena Purcell. Um, I, oh, yes. I did put my hand up and then I said, never mind. But what it really was, I could ask the chair um, or to dive a little deeper. I was just going to think of, was asking a question about the accountability in terms of like um, the what if the teacher doesn't fulfill the duties of and how that stipend was going to be retracted or given. Is it at the end of the year? Is it partly half year stipend type thing? Did they give it in January and then the second issued in June? Um, so I was just trying to make sure we had some type of accountability in there. That's all. But I'll ask maybe that's something later. <laughs> Okay, I didn't know. Did you all have an answer for that at this time, or is that something that you're still working on? Miss Scott, I could I could reply. Okay, uh, certainly. Thank you. So, yep. So that's that's part of the I guess the EDA arrangement, if that is the avenue um, that results in compensation for our liaisons. So when those duties are listed and those hours are listed, uh, really there's oversight from the from the the principal and also the office who compiled the uh you know the eda duties and whatnot to make sure that those duties are being carried out um so that's the accountability and making sure that um that liaison is fulfilling their duties um in order to receive that that compensation thank you all okay. right did we have any other questions okay and I had a question um, as far as how we were going um, to present this. Um, is this something that the council, are you all going to email it to the board or um, I guess what are the next steps? Because it, it's so well put together and everything. Um, I, I just wanted to see whether what the next steps would be. Um, Doug, do you want to answer that? I um. I'll let you start first because I actually I have some thoughts, but I'll wait for you to, to speak, Doug, first if you want to speak. Okay. okay. Sure. Um, thank you, Mr. And Ms. Scott, I'm actually gonna ask if you can, you know, as, as chair of this committee, if you could help with this. I know this is something you would ask for um, that we do present, uh, you know, information that was within your purview as a committee. So that's why we wanted to bring you, you know, this budget item and this policy item. So you know, we have this public record, if you will, of the meeting. So I don't know if that's enough for you to take it to the full board um, as a request. So I guess looking for, um, you know, to work in conjunction with how you would take it forward, I guess, whatever you need from the, okay. the, the council. And then I'll defer to, you know, Ms. Stith as the chair of the council as well. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to hear from the council if you all had any ideas or ways, but yes, I could certainly, um, I know how we bring it forward. Um, Ms. Stith, did you have any anything to add? No, so I think what, what Mr. Handy said is fine, as well as we're gonna continue meeting. We are scheduled to meet next week as well, um, so that we can, can, you, can kind of continue talking through, um, you know, again, how this works and what, what the structure is. Um, I had mentioned um, one budget item, for example, relating to, the EDA, excuse me, my phone is ringing. Okay. So I had mentioned one item as, as, as far as budget, right, specifically relating to EDA for the EAG, but also as we really get into looking at like these priorities, um, mm -hmm. one example um, was there was a program called Black Boy Joy and Genius, and it had been piloted at three middle schools um, and it was receiving a, a grant. Dr. Williams went and pursued that, and there's a grant from state funds. But now it's also been expanded to all the middle schools, and so there's money for that program. But even things like looking at that as far as um, a budget item and what is it going to take to continue to support something like that. So we're continuing to, to meet and just try to, you know, keep looking at these things and looking at what can we do um, as far as helping to resolve these disparities. And so if you do need us to make um, an additional presentation to the entire board at a board meeting, we're happy to do that. Um, but then also even part of what we talked about today with having 
you know, us be included as an other advisory group so that it's updated as of this current year. We're also able to speak to the board directly with um, that established time um, that mm -hmm. is present for all advisory groups at the at the board meetings. OK, got it. Yes, and I am glad that you all are looking at the budget and looking at um, ways of infusing um, uh, more equitable solutions because these are the kinds of ideas and kinds of things that are going to disrupt um, some of the current um, things that are going on now that were evidence in the um, equity review. So again, the time you all have spent and everything that you've done, I, I applaud you. It's wonderful. I'm very, very impressed. Um, I'm sorry, I don't mean to take up all the time talking. Were there any other <laughs> questions or did anybody else have any other comments? Thank you for that comment, Chair Scott. Certainly. Um, oh, it looks like someone would like a copy of the slide deck. And um, Mr. Handy, you said everything is in board docs? Yes, okay. ma'am. So exactly what, Miss. yep, everything's there. So I'll make sure. I know we have some new council members, so I want to make sure, I want to welcome them and then make sure they get all the information. So I'll, I'll take care of that. OK, perfect. Thank you. Yes, and welcome um, to all of our new council members. Um, it would be good also, yes, yeah, since everything is in, in the deck, that, that would be good as opposed to having it um, having to have it emailed over. I didn't know um, if you were going to email everything to the board or we can just get it from board docs. This presentation, yeah, so I believe, should already oh, be. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Handy. Go ahead. No, I was going to suggest, uh, Miss Scott, right? If you could look in, um, if you ah. can look in, so we have another another guest. If you could look <laughs> in board docs, and if you need more than what's there, um, you know, please let me know, and then um, we'll, uh, I'll work with Miss Dis to make sure you get it. Okay, that's excellent. Thank you. Because it should already be uploaded there in board docs as of right now, right? Is that right, Mr. Handy? Yes, correct. Yep. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So it's available now. Then if anyone wants to, to head over there to pull down the the um, copy of the slide presentation. Excellent. Great. All right. Thank you. OK, did we have any other questions or any more comments or anything? OK, because we're coming on the end of our meeting. Yes, <laughs> Ms. Hartnett is saying exciting work. I agree. I agree really um, interesting and exciting and I look forward to it. So um, looks like the last item on our agenda is announcements and the, the next equity committee meeting will be held Thursday, November 17th, 2022 at 4 p.m. And the next equity committee meeting with the equity council will be held on Thursday, January 5th at 5.30 p.m. So is there any further additional business? Okay, hearing none, then our meeting is adjourned. Thank you all so very much for joining us. Hope everybody has a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Good evening. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Goodbye. Have a great night. You too. Good night. <laughs>